A law-abiding resident of New Hampshire who is exercising his constitutional right should not become a felon by exercising that right when he is traveling through Massachusetts merely because he has not obtained a Massachusetts license to carry, which now, under the holding of Bruin, has to be issued to an applicant unless the applicant is otherwise disqualified. The standard for who is a disqualified individual must be the same. Otherwise, a state may decide to impose different requirements on the exercise of any constitutional right. For example, some states could impose different age limits on voting in elections. While I agree that the exercise of a constitutionally protected right should not make someone a felon because they did not pay a tax and get government permission, the judge did make a couple of mistakes. First, the power to determine who is disqualified to possess a firearm was not delegated to Congress. The Fifth Amendment clearly states, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The only way for someone to be deprived of the property they have in their rights is via due process of law. In this case, only as a punishment for conviction of a crime does the removal of a right meet the due process requirement. Since Congress only has general legislative authority over lands legally owned by the federal government, as from Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, they do not have the power to determine punishments for crimes within the state. Only the states themselves can do that. Also, the judge was wrong when he said, for example, some states could impose different age limits on voting ele in elections. If the judge had bothered to read the 26th Amendment, he would find that states can set their own voting age as long as it is not older than 18 years of age. The only way for someone to be deprived of the property they have in their rights is via due process of law. This court can think of no other constitutional right which a person loses simply by traveling beyond his home state's border into another state, continuing to exercise that right and instantaneously become a felon subject to mandatory minimum sentence of incarceration. Anecdotally, a law-abiding New Hampshire resident exercising his constitutional right to carry while shopping at the Pheasantry Mall in Nashua, New Hampshire, would become a felon when he shops in a section of the store at that mall, which happens to be in Tingsboro, Massachusetts. Well said. And I find the example of the Pheasantry Mall especially poignant. Therefore, the court finds that GL 269 Section 10A is unconstitutional as applied to this particular situated defendant and allows the motion to dismiss on that ground.